The COVID collection started with Lisa Fanner from South Africa. Um, this first painting that I got from hers, it's a commission. I just loved her colors and I loved how she put things together. And we were in such a state in the beginning with COVID that I just wanted to surround myself with uh, beautiful things to look at. And it's just going to be a moment. It won't last more than a month or two. And um, this was my fantasy of what um, I could do during COVID besides dancing every morning. I decided to start to collect things that I would not normally look at um, as it's, it's almost decorative. And um, I suddenly found myself falling in love with this artist and her work. This is from her picnic series. And everyone in the series I wanted it was terrible. I had to really control myself and not just keep saying, oh yes, send me that one, <gasps> send me that one. So, and this is the other one. There's something about it that I just recognized, that kind of longing for a less complicated summer. So Layla, Layla gave me the, um, <laughs> the start of this um, incredible summer, seven months, seven COVID months of collecting. And um, that's what I want to show you. Okay, let's not be too clumsy. Here's my hand going straight. We're at the end of six months of uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and I have had six months of surfing the internet, uh, texting friends, speaking on the phone, and being introduced or introducing others to artists and their work. So this is a kind of introduction to all the people that I found during those six months, and I certainly hope you enjoy it. I'd like for you to go to www.quarantinecottagehouse.com and you will find the list of the photographs and all the artists I discovered during this time. I certainly hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed finding and discovering them and discovering a little bit of who they are. And I'm going to put that all down there too. So www.quarantinecottagehouse.com quarantinecottagehouse.com C-O-R-E-N-T-Y-N-E cottagehouse.com Enjoy.
I wanted to make a videotape of new acquisitions during COVID and I didn't realize that I had really gone overboard um, by hunting through the internet, by remembering old friends, by thinking about the conditions that some of us were in as artists. I wanted to support, and then there were some people that I just discovered simply because um, we're all home and there were so many things to look at. So um, I was actually going to sort of cruise around, and now that I've actually come down to the gallery and I see all of these um, paintings still wrapped in plastic to be undone and to be unwrapped, and the ones that I also have up on the wall to talk about. I realize I've got to do it in a different way. So this is my introduction. Here is the COVID blast of new works acquired and uh, new artists discovered. And um, let's take a look at these. I'll actually end up doing them singly, okay? Oh, I see my bra strap showing, so we'll have to do that again. Ouch! Another thing that's kind of extraordinary is how it changed from just being COVID to the advent of Black Lives Matter, the horrific deaths of several people, Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, that, which was obviously the most horrific, but from that came a plethora of I would say protest paintings and we couldn't help but uh, have them take a real strong stand, look us straight in the face and have to deal with it. So it started for me with the works of Patrick Waldemar, a Jamaican artist who also lives in New Orleans for a good uh, deal of the year. And um, he had been commissioned to do a series of courtyard paintings for a gallery. And he found himself incorporating uh, people hanging from fountains. And um, I think he had uh, several sheets hanging on clotheslines, but they're in fact the costume of the KKK. And it was very, very hard. Um, not uh, very hard to avoid. I'm still emotional about it because there's so many artists who literally took up arms, paintbrushes, uh, and um, expressed their feelings that certainly represented a great many people. So let's take a look at these. There are a thousand reasons to collect art, and I really try to discipline myself. Um, I stick to art of the African diaspora. I always have a little book with me 
that will give me the names and references of artists that I've seen at art fairs and um, galleries. Um, some are just simply not affordable, but I can really appreciate it. I'm not a collector of prints, which as easy as that sounds in the sense they're so much less expensive, I would prefer to hold on, have less, but more originals, have less pieces, but more originals. And so I wait. And this can be quite a game because obviously if you wait too long, that artist's cachet keeps growing and then you find yourself completely out of the ballpark that you just simply cannot afford to get anything. And if you take a look at the overall picture of your collection, it may be that you really need to have that artist in your collection just to show a kind of, of leap. And then we were doing this in the 80s. And by the time it came to the 90s, it had turned to this kind of subject and, and story. And that artist might be the bridge that one needs between those two decades. Then, and only then, will I, will I go for a print. But otherwise, I'd like an original, even if it's that big from that artist. So um, it keeps things disciplined. It makes me not go completely crazy. And the only place that I feel like I'm footloose and fancy free are artists that are unknown to me that I'm just now discovering that I didn't know before. And um, I just wanted to start to collect them. So uh, here's um, Carl Don Juan, who's at, I found at the Copland Del Rio Gallery in Seattle, and it's called Lonely. And I just remember as a kid in boarding school what that feeling was like where we're all in uniform just as he is in his uniform of the cowboy hat and um, bandana. And that's his uniform of the day and my my school uniform was mine of the day and it, it was a very lonely place to be so when i saw the picture i thought doesn't that remind me of some young type more and um i got it just as a kind of homage to young people being isolated now what else is in this room behind me is nate lewis oh i, I talk about this because i also say that I do not collect pho uh, photographs and yet there's so many that I absolutely love and Nate Lewis is one of them. So you make rules for yourself and you're entitled to break them because when you come across someone like Zanelli Moholy, I happen to have a catalogue of hers here on the desk, um, I find her irresistible. Um, you're gonna see her all over the world. Uh, if, if not now, soon. She's, um, she's quite prolific and is uh, doing remarkable work. So that is it in terms of what I like to collect, how I like to collect the discipline I claim that I have and don't always but um, still always uh, thrilling for me. So let's take a look at some more that are downstairs. I start every morning with just surfing the internet just for a tiny bit, but on the weekends, that's now, I surf and look for new things with um, no direction, just a wild search. Just see what's out there. And uh, my computer's um, right there. And uh, 
I'm off to the races. And then pretty soon people will be showing up at the house and it'll all be alive and I'll have to get out and do other things. But that's my Art Jones during COVID. <laughs>